What do you make of this timing, Susan, of Boris announcing what uh, many of us, you included, I'm sure both of you, already knew? Well, for, yeah, exactly. It's not a surprise to anybody particularly. Um, it, some people have been saying that this is incredibly clever because he's done this while the Prime Minister is on a holiday. In fact, it seems that he's had a private meeting with Cameron earlier in the year when it was kind of agreed that he was going to be making this announcement at some point before the uh, conference, which is in a couple of months. And if you remember, only yesterday, we were all talking about Baroness Warsi and, and why she was leaving... Uh, the government, uh, the issue about Gaza and everything else, and now we're not talking about it. So it seems to be very conveniently timed uh, and to completely ruin as well Labour's plans for what they wanted to say during the summer break. Convenient, uh, Nigel, for the Tories may be, but is it convenient for the people he's meant to be representing in London and wherever this constituency happens to be that he's going to go for? Well, he's got to, he's got to announce fairly quickly if he's going to find a constituency in time for the election. I mean, maybe he felt that Baroness Wolsey hadn't ruined David Cameron's holiday enough, so he'd do it, do it for him. Um, but the, but he, he needs to get a constituency sorted out. There are several knocking about. They will be taken up fairly quickly because election procedures are going ahead. So I think about now, if you're going to stand in the general election, is about the right time. So you talk about David Cameron's reaction to this. You're not convinced, and, and neither is Rosendale Rubicon. Uh, I'm not sure if that's their real name on, on Facebook. No shock. He'll be the next Tory leader, Rosendale says. And if the Tories lose at the general election, David Cameron will quickly be outed. I think Rosendale might mean ousted. Uh, but even so, not, you're not convinced that David Cameron's pleased about this? No, not at all. Um, I mean, he's got to say so. And the best way to, uh, to neutralise your enemy is to embrace him. And that's exactly what David Cameron is doing. He knows very well that what Boris is doing is positioning himself just in case he can take the top job. Um, now, obviously, any prime minister is not very happy to be looking over his shoulder and finding that going on. But it's going to happen yeah. if you're prime minister, isn't it? And uh, you're uh, happy to know who it is as well, well and that they're there and where they are. He's not the only one, is he? We've had the cabinet reshuffle and there's a lot of talk about George Osborne keeping his eye on on the job next door. Mm. And if, you've got, if you're going to have, uh, as we're going to have in, in less than a year now, a general election, which at the moment looks like it's not going to be an outright win for any one particular party, in that circumstance, David Cameron's probably going to have to go anyway. Uh, when that happens, he's going to be straight out giving very expensive talks to corporations and getting himself on a board somewhere. And he's not going to be remotely bothered as to who's fighting back in Westminster. So he's just lining up with Osborne and Theresa May and Boris Johnson all coming back into the world. He's lining up a nice little fight for after he's gone and he doesn't care anymore. Carol Elizabeth McLean on Facebook says, same old rhetoric, different haircut. Is this really a man who could be Prime Minister one day? Well, stranger things have happened. Um, <laughs> so, have tell us. Uh, tell us. What? Yes, 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 he could. Um, what you would need, need for that to happen would be Cameron <laughs> would go and Boris Johnson would then have to try and garner the Eurosceptic Tories. Now, interestingly, in the speech today, he was very bullish about what we want from Europe. And he could be lining himself up to lead the no campaign if there's a referendum. So there's, there's still a, a lot of people in the Tory party, a lot of MPs who are still Eurosceptics. Those are the people Boris, uh, Boris will be after. Every serious MP I talk to says he hasn't got a chance. Yeah. But it, it can happen. But serious MPs, which perhaps he is underneath. I mean, he is very entertaining. He's always good value for us journalists when we, we talk to him. And that definitely connects with a lot of people regardless of of whether they're Tory, Labour or yeah, otherwise. Yeah, it's, it's the Nigel Farage factor. It's nice to have someone that you can warm to and that you're happy to go to a pub with. You're not going to want to go to the pub with Ed Miliband uh, or George Osborne, for that He's matter. He's good at a pub, by the way. <laughs> well, he is. Um, but the, you know, the issue is, if he does want to go and become Prime Minister, he's going to be open up to an awful lot more scrutiny than he's had already. You know, and he, his record up to now, politically, isn't brilliant. He's um, been a consistent and fairly persistent misleader as far as comes to the truth and the facts are concerned. He said 17 times he wasn't going to stand while he was still London mayor. He is now doing that for a year. Um, you know, there's so many skeletons in his closet, they'll probably have their own Mardi Gras if they ever come out. So <laughs> I don't really think that um, he's ever going to make it into Downing Street. He's just going to make a big mess when he gets in there. All good fun. Thank you both very much indeed. Uh